Okay, folks, we got a. Uh, people need to know how to tie the knot again. The hondu's already on the rope. Now you're gonna have a three strand rope. But before we do that, I have to do something that's really important. A uh, mate from Australia wanted to know about the barbecue and wanted to hear a recipe, so I'm gonna give you a real quick one. Everybody up in the northern range knows this one, but we get antelope over here, we call them speed goats. And they're just about like your kangaroo, I think. Anyway, you take a board like this and you soak it overnight in water. Now you take an antelope steak, after you've marinated it all night, and you lay it on this board. Now your barbie's going, and you slip the board in, put it inside, shut the door, keep the lid on, and you leave it for 47 minutes. Then you reach with a glove naturally, pull the board out, throw the antelope away, and eat the board. Okay. Here's the knot. There's three strands. So it's under under and under and back through tuck them in and it's going to look like that now you tighten those down just keep pulling the strings individually and you're going to end up with that now that is the first half of the knot. You always make your tails long enough where you can pull on them. And there's another way of doing this, which is with a screwdriver. Can help. Or a pair of needle nose can help. But you want this tight. Now it actually tightens down right at the very top of your unraveled rope. So now you're going to tie one below that. Same knot. There's your three strands. Under under and under back up through the hole now you tighten it down below your first knot so that's going to get pulled down nice and tight now tie it again Now you know I talked about Florida, the cattle business, Texas and the cattle business, and I'd like to share with you about California. In Florida we figured out it was 200 years before California. And if I'm not mistaken, cattle on grass, I think there's more cattle on grass in Florida than any other state. I could be wrong. Texas had to earn every single thing they got because they were literally on their own. They fought with Mexico and they fought the uh, Comanches. And oh, by the way, they were trying to put outfits together at the same time, catching wild cattle. And then it was brushed and haired over so bad that they only had a couple seconds to throw their rope. That's one of the seven reasons why they tie off hard in their short ropes. I remember in Montana, I drove for nine miles just to get to one gate on a pasture and never passed a bush or a tree. It was just rolling hills. There's nothing in the way. So California, 1769 was their first mission at San Diego. And they had a group came up through Baja, 
Mexico and they had a group come up on a ship. The ones that came up through Baja, they trailed livestock with them. Horses, cattle, sheep. I don't know if they trail pigs or not. But anyway, they brought livestock. 1769. And remember the 1500s on Florida. So the short story is, is that California is so different from Florida and Texas because the natives didn't give them hardly any trouble. They were they were peaceful type people. Well, it, it made it real easy for the Padres in the missions to turn them into slaves because they didn't fight. They were fine. They kind of like getting food they didn't have to go kill. And uh, so that set up the deal. And now the, the Padres were in charge of everything back then. These were the first ones here were Jesuits. The second ones were Franciscans. But anyway, the herds, the cattle multiplied fast. Everything did. Now, just for the sake of conversation, if you ever see this, tied like this, that's called a frayed knot. Okay. So now we've got our beautiful Turk's head and we've got ends. So anyway, the mission San Diego and say, for example, San Luis Rey, one of them just north of there, had 10,000 head of cattle in a real short period of time. Okay, in 1830s, Mexico split from Spain and the and the monks, the Jesuits, were told to go back to Spain. So they just pulled out and left all that livestock. And that's where all these Spanish land grants started. And they were given to the guys that had been soldiers and uh, stayed and were no longer had an allegiance to Spain. But they did have an allegiance to California because there was all kinds of land. So... Whoever was in charge at the time, which was several different people, they gave them land grants. And you got to know that the cattle were on the coastal range, which means at that time they were on fresh water and lots of grass, and it wasn't a big deal to gather them. And one of the laws of the Spanish world was that once a year you had to have a roundup. So by law, they gathered all the cattle. They branded what they needed to brand. Each each guy sent people from his his uh, rancho, and because of this, ranching was pretty darn simple. So now they got all these cattle and no people. So what they did was they ended up with the tallow and hide trade to have a market for their cattle. So they killed the cattle because there wasn't nobody there to eat them except the, the Indians that stuck around the missions that dissolved and turned into ranches. And what they had was hides and tallow. So they had ships that came into port and the ports were now open because they didn't have Spain to worry about. And anybody could pull in and load up their ship with hides, which was a commodity, and tallow. And they would take the ship and go back around the, the uh, Horn, South America. And on the way down, they'd stop in Peru and Chile and trade off the tallow. Because they used them in the mines for used tallow for, for uh, candles. So they get back east with all them hides and then they turn it into shoes and funny thing to me was them captains would bring back all this fancy stuff and uh, some rancher might have got a pair of shoes for his bride that was used to be his cow. The point of the story is is that California had all kinds of time and they weren't in a hurry and they were so far away from Mexico that they weren't intimidated by them. 
So they made up their own deal. And all kinds of people got Spanish land grants and turned into some really nice ranches. So this little golden age, as we called it, because of the golden light against the mustard in California, the discipline of the spade bit horse was born because of all the time these folks had to work on their horsemanship. The Florida guys and the Texans were just trying to live through the day. The Californians had all kinds of time and all kinds of horses and really beautiful weather. So that's kind of how this thing happened. In each culture, as in Florida, Texas, and California, got their own style of riding out of a, depending on the country they were in or what was going on. So the California tradition, as we call it, that's how it came about. That's how special it is to me because I am a student of the California. Now, this Hondu is designed to turn. So you turn it whichever way you need to and know that it should lay with the coils. Now what happens is, is when you start roping, you're going to suck this knot down into this hole. And that's going to set that hondu in the correct position by pulling it down in there. Okay, so now, for whatever reason, it starts to twist. You just push the knot back up through it, turn the hondu, and pull it back again. That's how you adjust it. This is why I use this type of hondus, is because they last me a long time. And they slide rope, they got a little bit of drag on the hondu, they're not fast like a metal hondu. And they work for me. So that's how you tie the knot, unless you're getting married. Now, the Californio, it can go on and on forever, but I'm just telling you that the difference is, is that California had a more tranquilo situation. They didn't have to fight a lot of elements or the indigenous people, and they pretty much just had it made. So they had all the time in the world to work on their horsemanship, and then it got to be the where the who had the best horse and there was a lot of pride involved. So the Dons rode really beautiful horses. And because of the tallow and hide trade, they traded for silver and gold thread and materials. And that's why we as Californians have more silver on our bridles than any other culture. That's where that came from. It was a matter of pride in showing off. So over time, just like oil got discovered in Texas, gold was discovered in California. So from 1769, basically up until the 1848, was the window that I focus on. This is when they were having to rope grizzly bears. This is when they were shipping five-year-old steers. As in, when the gold mines showed up, they took all their cattle and headed to Frisco with them. And man named Henry Miller butchered him, in which we all know his story. But what my point is, is that gold changed the entire skew of everything. That changed the bridal horse world. Because it became a state, and then all these gringos started taking over and bringing their things with them, and they started to taint the bridal horse. It's just a matter of progression. That's the way it works. Evolution. That's why I really focus on the old days. I don't have grizzlies to rope and I don't ship five-year-old steers, but I do know the sense of balance that those horses had to do the things that they were able to do. It's pretty phenomenal. Okay. Then the war started. Civil War, World War One, World War Two. After World War Two, the whole horse world changed. You got the AQHA, and people started to have money after the war and they got into horse showing. So now here we stand today and I am still thinking of the early 1800s. Well, okay, everybody gets to think what they want. That's why I do what I do. That's my discipline. And that's the roots and that's where it comes from. 
So I hope that makes sense to you. Next I'll talk about Hawaii. Because everything I talk about or have, to have something to do with Spain originally. And they had seaports. Place to go with their cattle. Thank you. For those of us that make a living outside horseback, no matter where you're from, we're, we're basically historians. And then there's a lot of us that take it a step further and we read about where we live because history is so important to us. And it makes you feel good to know that you're riding a horse across the same country somebody did a long time ago. And there's that factor they call it, that he's got it, talent, whatever. i got to tell you about somebody that if you're really interested in the whole California cowboy buckaroo western experience, his name is Dave Stamey, and he's a singer. And there isn't a man that sets a horse that doesn't like him. And he's a very generous person. But the point is, is if you listen to his music, there's a lot of humor involved. Imagine that. And through his songs, you will learn a lot about the West if you're interested in learning. So Dave Stamey is a friend and somebody that I really look up to and respect. And no, he did not pay me to do this. He doesn't even know where I'm at. So, listen to his music. Thanks. Oh, and don't forget to like one of us. I don't care who.